Hey guys, it's Mara, um, and in this video, I want to talk to you guys about my recent lab results I got back from Quest and kind of explain some of the things if you guys are also interested in what your lab results mean. I can kind of explain each test I got done and what my result means and the range. So, um, the first test I got done was insulin. So, I do have a PCOS or a poly cystic ovary syndrome. So what that means is either you have like the hormonal part of it, you have the actual cysts on your ovaries, or you can have both. There's different um, deciding factors, I guess, um, to being diagnosed with PCOS. So first one is insulin. Um, usually the on the worse or more <laughs> more worst cases of PCOS, your insulin is going to be high. Um, and when I have done labs before, the very first time I think I got my insulin checked, um, it was not a fasting insulin, and so my insulin was high. And along with all my other stuff, they said I had PCOS. Which I do, but I'll get into that. So my insulin was actually 3.7 from my lab results this past week. Um, the reference range is 2 to 19.6, so that's actually really good. Um, I know for me, my fasting insulin is actually always fine, but if I do have, you know, carbs and sugars, my insulin will spike pretty high, and then my sugars will go down low in a result to that. So they call that um, reactive hypoglycemia, so I do kind of have that. Um... So the next thing is the DHEA sulfate. Um, that's another kind of hormone test they, they check. It has to do with, uh, well, it has to do with PCOS, but also has to do with just your home hormone cycles. I forget what it stands for. It's di di dihydroxy something, something, something. It's also what they put in milk for like babies. Uh, but mine was 243. And the reference range is 18 to 391. So it's a little on the higher side, but it's not bad. Okay, next test is vitamin B12. So a lot of people have um, vitamin B12 deficiencies or they take B12 for energy. Um, the reference range for that is 200 to 1100. Mine was 660, which is, I think, pretty good. Um, I do drink a lot of kombucha, which does have B12 in it. Um, and some of my other supplements have B12, um, but, you know, things that are fortified, I think I don't really have a lot of, like, fake fortified foods because most of those are, like, whole grain cereals and stuff like that. Um, so it wouldn't be from something like that, if that makes sense. It'd be from a vitamin or just naturally getting B12 from something, I don't know, some kind of food. Um, my next result, let's look, I have it up on my computer, I'm just looking at it, um, online because I did get sent the report through an email because I'm signed up through Quest, so it's really easy, you can just see all your results. So my CBC, which is my complete blood count, which includes, um, your differential and your platelets, so my white blood cell counts were 6.7, and that's in the thousands range, um, and the range for that is 3.8 to 10.8 which 6.7 is normally where I'm about at. I'm anywhere from like a 6 to an 8. Um, sometimes if I'm, you know, sick, obviously my body will respond. Maybe I'll be around 10, but my normal range is about 7, so I wasn't feeling sick at this point. My red blood cells were 4.31. The range for that is 3.8 to 5.1. So I'm like right in the range with that. My hemoglobin was 13.6. Um, the range for that is 11.7 to 15 and a half, which normally I'm about almost 13 or 14, which is really good for a female um, because you don't want to be, you know, be iron deficient. You don't be anemic. You're going to be more pale. You're going to be more fatigued, maybe a harder time breathing if your hemoglobin is really low. Um, my hematocrit, nobody cares about that really. MCV, 92, range 80 to 100. That's pretty good. Um, that also has to do with how big your red cells are. So if you're, um, if it's lower, then you could have, um, well, if it's higher, it's usually B12 or 
can be iron deficiency anemia, but I'm not anemic, so not a big issue. Um, my platelet count was 205. The range for that is 140 to 400, and that's in the thousands. So I have 205,000 platelets, which is um, decent. I mean, I used to, I think, be about 250 range. When I get below like 150, it's kind of, I probably have something going on that's involving my liver. Um, but that's a decent number. Um, and then it gives also my absolute neutrophils, absolute lymphocytes, all that, which is your lymph percentage times your white count, and that will give you your absolute. So, and for neutrophils and all that. So, um, my neutrophil percentage is 57.9. That's good. Uh, my lymphocytes are 35. That's a teeny bit high. Um, yeah, I think the range is like 20 to 40 percent, so it's okay. Um, monos is 5, which that's fine, and eos is 1.2. And, um, let's see, basophils on here somewhere? Should be. Basophils is 0.4, so, um, basophils, eosinophils, they have to do with, like, allergic reactions, parasites, stuff like that. Um, if you have really bad allergies, your eosinophils are usually high, but mine aren't in this case. Um, I also got my thyroid checked, so... I usually know that my thyroid, I usually can check my thyroid and it's been fine, but I went ahead and got this checked. So my TS, TSH is 2.11. So the range for, um, let's see, greater than or equal to 20 years is 0.4 to 4.5. Our range is, it depends what kind of methodology their testing is. Um, usually you don't want to see over three um, but anyway, mine's a 2, so that's a decent range for not being on any medications currently. Um, my T4 free and my T3 free um, were 1.2 and 2.6 respectively. So the range for that is 0.8 to 1.8 and 2.3 to 4.2. So both of those are good. My thyroid's doing good. Okay, next test that I'm um, not doing so great on is vitamin D. So they do that vitamin D total um, and that is considered both the plant-based vitamin D and then like the vitamin D um, 25. Well it's the vitamin D 25 hydroxy which um, I don't take any like What's the other one? D2, I think, is like the for vegans or maybe even vegetarians. I'm not sure. Um, but that's a plant-based vitamin D, so I don't think mine would be anything from that. I think mine's all D3. Um, but the range is 30 to 100. Mine is 33, which is not very good. Um, but on average, I feel like mine is around the 30s when I'm not doing a very good job of supplementing my vitamin D. I know I have a low vitamin D. Um, it's something I should take regularly, like daily, and I don't. Um, I know it's summer, but uh, I'm at work a lot inside, and so I'm not getting the vitamin D I need, plus my body just doesn't absorb it well. So, you really would like your vitamin D to be in the 50 range. The higher, the better, honestly. Closer to 100, like, you have to take a lot to get it up that high if you're low. And most people in the you know, population, United States population, I don't know about everywhere, but have a low vitamin D, um, and a lot of people don't know it. Elder, elderly people, like when they're breaking their bones and stuff, they all got low vitamin Ds. Okay, next test is my hemoglobin A1C. That is your average glucose for the last three months. It's the test that diabetics get done um, to monitor their medication and see how well they're doing with their sugars. So, the reference range for that is anything less than 5.7 um, and minus 4.9. So, that's pretty good. Um, they say on their ranges 5.7 to 6.4, you're considered to be pre-diabetic. Um, and really, with having PCOS, another thing is insulin resistance, so high insulin. And also, A1C being pre-diabetic or like basically diabetic due to your PCOS. So, you really want to watch that. You want to keep your numbers down not trying to drink a bunch of sugary stuff all the time um, because that could make your PCOS worse. Um, so my next one are my FSH and LH. Those have to do with PCOS, um, but your female hormones, they have to do with, um, 
you know, your cycle, like your, how your progesterone and then your estrogen and then you ovulate and then have your period. And anyway, it's confusing. But I know if your, what is it, if your LH is more than twice your FSH, then that's another indicator of PCOS. So, and then it gives different ranges for everything and it depends where you are at in your cycle. So I was about a week out from having my period. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, so is that follicular phase, I think? Or luteal phase? I don't know, I should know this stuff. Um, but every, both of those were within the range. I think the LH was like only 0.2 away from being high. Um, because the range goes up to 12.5 and I was 12.4. So I have had the, my LH be more than twice my FSH before and that's kind of part of why they diagnosed me with uh, PCOS and having like crap for progesterone. But I will get to that. Next one they tested was testosterone. Um, a lot of women with PCOS have high testosterone. So although my free testosterone was good, it was 2.6 in the reference range, I assume for women, is 0.1 to 6.4. Um, my total testosterone was 44, which the reference range is from 2 to 45. So that is kind of getting high and probably not good for uh, like me growing hair on my face and probably my acne, although it has been doing a little bit better. Um, so yeah. Let's see, next thing, oh, my progesterone. So I have been, um, I was supplementing my progesterone nightly, 400 milligrams, which is a ton, I think. I mean, I don't know what my body's doing with it, but it's doing something. Um, but then I didn't have my period for an extended amount of time. So I thought, well, maybe I'm taking too much. Like, I don't know. I would take it for 25 days and then not take it for five days. So then I tried a bunch of different stuff trying to have my period since I haven't had it in a long time. And I took some nose spray, normally makes me have my period. Um, I took some, oh, what's that stuff called? Dong Kui, which usually makes me have my period, which I think is the reason I actually did have my period. But after that, I just started taking 200 milligrams instead of 400. Um, and that's what I've been taking. So the range on this, for follicular phase is supposed to be less than or equal to 2.7 and mine was only 0.4 um, and then it says post, -men post menopausal phase is less than or equal to 0.2 so not that far off from post menopausal um, but actually if I wouldn't be supplementing I know for a fact I would be considered post menopausal um, because I doubt I would have hardly any progesterone in me at all so, um, next thing I got tested is my magnesium. So if you guys have seen my natural calm, uh, magnesium supplementation is very important, um, I believe. And this was a magnesium test for my red blood cells. So, not just your serum, serum mag, because that's only like 2% of 1%, whatever, of your whole body's magnesium. It's, most of it's inside your red blood cells, so I got that test. Um, and mine was actually pretty good. It was 4.6 and the reference range is 4 to 6.4. So next thing um, I got is my CMP. So your CMP is all your chemistry tests, um, your glucose, your um, BUN, your urea nitrogen, um, your creatinine, your electrolytes, your calcium, your protein, your albumin, um, your bilirubin, which would be like your liver, um, your alkafos, your AST, your ALT, that's all your liver enzymes. So, um, all that was really good actually. So my glucose fasting was 80, which is a good number. Um, let's see what else. My electrolytes were pretty good. Um, my calcium was 9.3, which the range is 8.6, 10.2. Sometimes my calcium does get low and then I know for sure my vitamin D is going to be low. Um, let's see, albumin was 4.7, which that's good. The range is 3.6 to 5.1. Um, usually you see low albumin, you'll also see low iron, low hemoglobin. Um, but we know I'm not anemic, so that's good. Total protein was 7, the range for that 6.1 to 8.1, so that's perfect. Um, and all my liver enzymes were good because I take my milk thistle. No, <laughs> I haven't been taking it that much lately. 
um, but my Billy Rubin's good too. It's 0.5 and that range is 0.2 to 1.2. So lastly, the only thing that was really bad um, of all my lab results, and I don't even know that I've ever gotten this tested before. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Um, but that was my red blood cell level of zinc. So I did some research on zinc, and honestly, unless you're like a baby, unless you're like over 60, most people don't have issues with zinc. Um, but I read a lot of the uh, symptoms of having low zinc, and I was like, me, me, me. I was like, well, dang, okay, I guess this is an issue. Um, a lot of it is, it says you have poor wound healing, you're more likely to have acne, I'm like, huh, me. Um, it said... You're, you're more fatigued because it is important. It's like a heavy metal, but it's not um, like a bad heavy metal. It's zinc, you know. And I got to thinking, well, a lot of things, like I said earlier, fortified milk, I mean, not milk, um, cereals and stuff like that, which I don't eat. So probably back in my gluten -y days, my zinc was fine. Um, but it's hard, really hard to get 100% uh, of your daily value of zinc. Um, it says it's highest in like pumpkin seeds which can't eat because they give me the poops um like cashews which i've been trying to eat some lately even though those if i eat too many i also get the poops so i was like what's all with all this zinc crap that's not like not get along with me in my tummy um so anyway the reference range for that is 9 to 14.7 and mine was 7.3 so yeah i did go by the store and buy some zinc tablets because um I looked around, I have a lot of vitamins, but none of them actually had like zinc, any good number. Um, I did have like a calcium magnesium zinc that I think they were probably old anyway, but it only had like 33% of your daily value. So I just went and bought strictly zinc. So I'm going to start taking that pretty regularly, obviously, because I need to. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking it might help out with me having more energy and stuff like that since it is an important element <laughs> but yeah um i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions about your lab results want to ask them ask them to me um i do know quite about a lot about these sorts of things but yeah um or if you have any questions about my lab results i will gladly talk to you then talk to you about them yeah so uh thank you guys for watching and i'll talk to you guys later bye